The last area we're going to look at in congruence of triangles is congruence of overlapping triangles. Now sometimes when diagrams are given, as you see here, we actually have multiple triangles showing up simultaneously. So something that can be done is look at the items that they share in common. In our first triangle that we look at here, this one on the left, we can actually break it down to a small triangle like this and a much larger triangle that looks like this. And the part that they share in common is going to be the angle at the lower left. So we already have a congruence of symmetry or a reflexive congruence shown here by the presence of that overlap. In our second triangle, we can actually find three different triangles in here, but the one that we're going to take a look at is the left one and the right one and the fact that what they share in common is a congruent side. So we already have parts established that we can build off of in order to start to establish congruence of side, 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 or side, angle, side, or any of the ones that we've studied up to this point. So as we have these overlaps, sometimes it is very helpful to break it down into the smaller pieces and look at the triangles individually in order to begin proving your common parts and commonalities between them. So let's take a look at how we can do In the figure on the left, we have a couple of triangles. And the triangles that we're going to look at are triangle A, D, C, and triangle E, B, C. So in order to look at these well, we're going to pull them apart. So we have A, D, C with its labels. And then we have E, B, C with its parts labeled. And then if we were to try and figure out what we have in common between them, it's angle C here at the base. So we already have one item of the three needed established in order to build a congruence proof. On the left, there's a number of triangles that are shown here, but let's start taking a look at some of them in pieces. If I want to know what is shared in common between triangles a, B, D, and triangle D, C, A. The best way I can do that is to break it apart. So we have A, B, D, slightly downscaled version of that, and D, C, A, gives us this. So what do they have in common when we see them broken apart? And that is line segment AD. But what if I were to take a look at a different pair of triangles that are shown here? What if I wanted to know about triangle, triangle ABD and then triangle BAC? Again, we're going to need to break this down into its pieces. So A, B, D looks like this, same as we had before. And then our second one, B, A, C looks like this. So what's shared in common is that line segment A, B. And we could continue to do comparisons like this, but hopefully at this point you're seeing what all can come of this. So when we need to establish congruence between items and proofs, look for what is shared in the overlapping triangles. Let me show you what I mean. Given this figure, and knowing that triangles ACD and BDC are congruent, we need to prove that line segment CE and line segment DE are congruent. So let's pull out our pieces. ACD is congruent to BDC. And with that, we get all the 
angles that are the same and everything that goes with it. Well, those angles end up being important because angle DCB located here is in the second triangle named. Angle CDA located on the right is located in the first triangle named. Well, inside of that smaller triangle, triangle ECD, we now have two sets, uh, or a set of congruent angles. And according to our angle theorems from isosceles triangles, if those base angles are the same, then the angles opposite them are congruent as well. So we have established that proof through our isosceles triangles theorems. At other times when we're trying to prove congruence, we need to break our triangles down even further, and we'll take a look. So in this diagram, triangles, or angle CAD, so let's begin labeling our parts, angle CAD is congruent to angle EAD. And angle C is going to be congruent to angle E. So, let's take a look at all the things that we have in common now. We can establish that triangle EAD is congruent to triangle CAD by angle, angle, side, since angle A, or line segment AD is congruent to itself. Now knowing that, we can start taking apart the other pieces and establish that line segment ED is congruent to line segment CD by corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. And looking at our smaller triangles, we would be able to establish that angle E D, F is congruent to angle C, D, B by vertical angles. This tells us that triangle C, B, D is congruent to triangle E, F, D by angle, side, angle, and if that's true, then we can conclude, therefore, that BD, BD is congruent to FD, again, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. So taking all the ideas that we learned in this chapter, or in this unit of study, we can do a number of congruence and proofs simply by looking at what commonalities are shared. So study these ideas of the overlapping triangles because a lot of things that we find in society and in architecture around us involve overlap of ge geometric shapes. So be ready to use these as we move forward, as always.